Hello, everyone. Welcome to another awesome day of FileMaker Training. I am Richard Carlton, creator of FMTrain.tv, where every day at this time slot, we're having a great deal of fun learning how to make the FileMaker platform work well for us, work well for our customers, the people who pay us money. <laughs> And so uh, today continues that conversation. Today I am broadcasting live from Clara's headquarters where I've already had meetings with them. So if you go to fmtrain.tv, you can see the upcoming broadcast schedule. You can also see uh, the uh, various bundles and things that we have going on. Today is a conversation. We I talked to Clara, so I'll give you a little bit of an update on what Clara's is doing. And then we're going we're gonna to go into this ongoing, well, not really ongoing. We've had a number of people, including Jess, who's asked over and over that we talk about preferences discuss that today's conversation for jess let's talk about this real quick so things to do that we do we save data to right so in the world of filemaker and and i'm gonna and i'm, I'm laying these out here because once you understand these when we set, talk about saving data um we talk about a text or number data okay this is really basic but i'm gonna start with the basics here we say that those are text or number fields that are part of records and you can save data in there and if you have a hosted solution the data is saved back to the server Global fields, as you work in them in a hosted environment on a server, if I, a solution that's on a server, they, this data is not not uh, preserved past the session. Once again, these are hosted shared solutions with everyone, right? So we understand that idea, hosted shared solutions with everyone. Um, and so they're not saved. So when you close the file, all the changes you made to globals are gone. Local variables are very... Uh, <laughs> have a very a very short uh, shelf life, right? As far as the script running, right? That's one. Then you have the global variables, which again, um, they're not preserved, uh, but these things, uh, they're once again, not preserved past the end of this session, right? So the global variable and the global field are almost identical, except global variables are used a lot in path names and scripts. Global fields can be used in a relationship. That's the unique part about that. You can't use variables in a relationship and the definition of relationship so yeah so that being said how do you save there's two scenarios that we have we have two scenarios we have we have user settings and then we really have kind of system-wide settings and i don't know if, the, if we covered both these this came out of our book the uh the book that we are going to update but really it hasn't changed too much um the reason it hasn't changed is because FileMaker is backwards compatible. They don't break older solutions that people have built as a general rule. So you have uh, user settings, and then we have, and then there's this, uh, then you have system-wide settings right here. Um, I guess I could make this bold right here. That would make it a little easier. Um, so user settings are preferences that are specific to the user. When the user logs in, they should be identify who they are, what they are. If I'm going to go over here and pop something. There is so a quick question about global fields and global variables, if you are yes. down to take it. Yes. Uh, the only thing confusing to me is that global fields work differently in a local environment versus a server yeah. environment. Yeah, all right. So, so, so this is why, okay, so, okay, back up. This, it's so funny that we're having... The, the ant, the reason why this stuff is the way it is, is for the same reason. So why is layout mode called layout mode? Okay. And, I, and this is the same, we have the same issue here. Layout mode was created when back in the days of FileMaker, scripts didn't even exist yet. There was no script workspace. Scripts didn't exist. There was no code. You could create a calculation field. You'd have a layout. You could switch layouts. So if there were layouts. There was layout mode. You could edit layouts. There wasn't all this other stuff. You could define fields that went on the layout. So the field definition stuff, it used to be called not managed database. It was called defined fields, I believe, right? And that was before relationship stuff. So, so it was called layout mode. It made sense and it was never changed because it was people would lose their minds. Global fields were created before hosted solutions were really a thing. They had, there were fields that were, that's why we call them global fields. Uh, the technical term that, Claris will refer to it, and at least in an official capacity, is there fields with global storage. That's a fancy new lipstick on an old pig. And so back in the old days, when you would go into field definitions uh, and you're over here and you're doing fields, um, if you would, uh, down here at the bottom, bottom right here, and you're going to define a new field, it would say text number, dot, 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 and then right here it would say global at the bottom. So it was a kind of field. And then along the way, Clara said, well, really, any of these fields could be globals. 
So this is this it's a storage option for the field. All right, fine. So we'll so we're gonna change the lipstick from blue to chartreuse or something. And and it's different color lipstick on the same pig. And they instead of it being here, they move it up and up, uh, not up in there, but they move it to options. So you go to options, you go to storage, then you turn it on right there. So it was organically, uh, that's that happened. That's one thing that happened. The other part was that they were created before really sharing and hosting was a thing. And what, what, what we realized or what Claris realized was that, and this is back 1991, 92, is that that they came out with their first FileMaker server in like 93 or whatever it was, FileMaker, actually 91, I think. FileMaker Pro 2, and the very first server was from that. The, they, they didn't know what to do with the globals, but they didn't want to break people's solutions retroactively backwards. And so a lot of globals, Margaret, you don't understand this, but most globals, like if you ask an AI, what are the downsides or what do you have to be careful with in building a solution? It comes out, well, one of the security weaknesses or whatever is that globals are shared across all all sessions and stuff. When you ask an AI, I remember one time we talked about, what, give me, talk about FileMaker things. The AI knew that FileMaker was a relational database. So then it went out, found all the generic problems with relational databases and assigned them to FileMaker, okay? Globals were specifically designed to uh that they didn't want people to break so they would be when you open up a, a copy of a solution on the server you get your own private copy of global fields and we talk about this in the book they're called private they're called private global fields the word private is something that's implied by claris they are session specific to you as a user right claris turned those on specifically so it wouldn't retroactively break previous solutions it wouldn't retroactive, retroactively break things okay so really with with global variables you have global variables that are session specific and are never saved claris is talking about persistent global fields and variables right i don't know when and if we see those things um but that's an important thing david just said before uploading solution server be sure that the global fields are empty yeah if you have the time in the day, but if you're running flat out at, at warp nine and you're coding as fast as you can and to make the deadline, right? You're going to forget to do that. That's why what I always tell people to do is on the startup script, your startup script should assume that if you have essential global fields, that you're going to want to clear those and set those to, during the startup script, set them to a value that you want, value that is 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 useful because it's a test question and it's it's obscure and I, I really hate almost talking about it um, unless someone gets stuck. But if you have a local solution, like right now, <laughs> right now, this copy of starting point uh, right here is local. If I go in here and I define a field in contacts and I call it uh, global frog <laughs> status, and then I put the word uh, global in here, uh, stat status okay and i can put the word global in here or i just put g that's just a linda cater that i know what it is i'm gonna say create text field text field options storage global okay so because the file is local then these are by definition still private global fields because i'm the only person using this solution it's private on my computer you're like yeah, that's kind of a lazy definition of private. Well, who else is on my computer with me? Just me, right? So that's kind of this rub. And so how do they preserve that behavior when you put it on the server? So if I go over here, I'm going to put global frog status in right here. I go browse mode. I put is it right here. I put Kermit rocks. Okay, and the, and the field sucks. I'll just make it, let's make it, uh, if I click over here, I'm going to go to this, the styling. I'm going to say the fill color will be a solid color. Let's make it white, and the text color will be like red or something. Bold. There we go. So then we got Kermit Rocks right here. That's a global field. If I close the file then reopen it, it's preserved because I am perceived to be the only local user, right? That's how it kind of worked in the old days, okay? And so... It's preserved there. Then if I take this file and I post it, I say, I'm going to upload it to a host. I just was watching a video the other day where I tried to explain what a host was. It should say upload to a server. So if I go share, upload to a FileMaker server, OK, 
Okay. I have to set a password. Okay, password one, two, three, four. And of course, you folks are probably going to instantly cause problems with this. Set password. Okay, then I'm going to post it to stream at RC Consulting. Post it there. Hit upload. Because it had that global value in there as a local user and I closed it, it was still in there. When I post the server, it's still in there. So the value starts with that Kermit rocks. And so you're like, well, that's really stupid. It should blank them out. It is what it is. It's not going to change. And so my suggestion is in the startup script, all the essential globals that you have, you should set them to blank or null or give them some intro introductory value. Or as David Angel just said, clear them, then upload them. But I didn't do that. I wanted you to see what was going to happen here, right? So if I go to admin and then one, two, three, four, and you folks can log in this if you care to do that. It's up to you. It's totally fine. I'm going to go over here to contacts and then Kermit rocks. You're like, well, shit, right? It's in there. So if I delete it, it's gone. It's gone. It'll never be there again. Close it. Reopen it again. Reset. Go back to here again. Open it up. Admin. Two, three, four. Okay. And so, once again, somehow, some way, it's there again. Whatever, wh whenever you start a FileMaker solution up as a client of a server, which is hopefully all of you for the most part, it takes all the globals that that are that were predefined by when the user was using it as a single person. And it it makes it like slices off your own personal copy. It's going to slice off your own copy of these globals. They're your own personal copies. And when you're done, they are not retained and saved to the server. Okay. That behavior is why we have to create the preferences table, right? Because we really, I mean, what if, what if Kermit rocks, but he sucks bad, right? Sucks bad. But what if I close this? And go back into it, it'll be back to current ro as the current rock. So how do you use, you can't use this as a preference setting, which would make sense, except it's not a persistent global field. It's just, it's a, it's a, it's a global field specific to the session. So file, manage, database, ding, ding, ding. We get the preferences tables. These are all the tables. I have a bunch of records in here. You get the preferences and it should have one rec, one record in it and one record only ever. And so if I hit a button here, I go to home and I want to see preferences. So now I want to lay out that belongs to preferences. All these are fields. These are number and text fields. They are all saved. Um, if I make a change here, or one of you wants to log in and make a change, go ahead and do that. I'll sit here and wait for you. Someone else makes a preference record change. That preference is saved with everyone. So this is these are system-wide preferences, system-wide preferences, okay? Because we're saving into a text field or a number field or whatever kind of field, not a global field. And it's saved to the record because it's one record only in preferences. If we relationally connect to preferences and we want to get a setting, we just we don't have to worry about which record to get it from. There's only one record in there. We always get it from that one record. We say, what is the value in preferences? Just go to preferences. Doesn't matter. Grab that field. That value is it. This right here is the company name. What is the company name that runs this copy of starting point? And so someone that makes an edit and puts it in there and they hit commit and save, then it distributes that in real time to everyone, which also means that if you're sitting in the middle of Egypt or Af Africa or Gaza someplace and you're logged into FileMaker and someone keeps making changes to the preferences, like a script that's making a lot of changes, you're going to get bombarded with updates to your file, to your session because you're logged in. Go ahead, Margaret. Question. Are these all fields that are related? So that contacts and what places, or is it all like global fields? How do we tap into these? How do we tap into preferences? How could we, let's create, let's just do this. Um, I'm going to leave this up for a moment. Someone will update this. I want to create a brand new, say create, not new. I'm going to go manage database. Let's create, uh, yeah, let's do Muppets. Famous, famous Muppets who are green, right? Something like that. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a brand new table called Muppets, Okay. These are all the little puppety things that we're going to do with our show. I'm going to create this, okay? And I'm going to say, create the table. And it comes up with five fields automatically. So I'm going to double click here. I almost always delete these because they are they have all sorts of validation requirements on it. It'll throw dialogues all the time. It's so obnoxious. So I always delete them. 
So then after a moment, it's trying to make sure that we didn't use this table anywhere else. Okay. I'm going to say ID Muppet. And then I could put an underscore P for primary or something like that. If I wanted to, I say create option, create a auto enter with a serial number and say like zero zero, you know, or, or I'll, a lot of times I'll put an MUP like Muppet on there. So if I see the primary key, then I know that it, if I see MUP, then I know that the, it, even because a lot of times I have customers who have, tell me what you see and they read the number back and it doesn't make any sense because they say, well, we're on the Muppet layout, but they're actually on a contact screen. If they read me the number <laughs> and it says C-O-N as opposed to, as opposed to M-O-P or M-U-P, then you know something's a little squirrely. Margaret did, cu Margaret did customer service so they, with Big Valley. They had, they had a problem. So I say, okay. Now, the other one I do is ID. I, and the reason I do this is very explicit because I don't like things that are vague. Um, we had this conversation the other day where we said, if Richard, and that was the calculation. Some of you said, well, that's proper terminology. I just talked to Clarice about this. In their brand new documentation on Studio that they're prototyping, they're, the engineers who are professional engineers here at Claris did shorthand stuff like that. Like, is Richard? Is Richard hungry? Is Richard beautiful? He's so pretty. Or, you know, so, or is it should be, is Richard hungry? Or is Richard overexposed to the lighting in here is too bright for me? So I don't, so I like to be explicit about things like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say ID constant. And we created this years ago. I'm going to say create it. Uh, what I do is I say change it as a calculation. It's an auto enter calculation. I'm going to say change. I say change it. Uh, it's always a one. It's always a number. It's always a one. Always, always, always. So I say, okay. Then what I do in relationships is that I, uh, well, I can hit okay. It'll save the change. And then uh, SoCal Kermit is there. People put dead in here, okay, because I got the update, right? If you do it, you'll see the almost the instantaneous refresh. You post it, everyone else gets these preference settings, system-wide preference setting. If I show my status toolbar, I'm going to go down here to the bottom. It probably created a Muppet layout somewhere, I would imagine. Is it? Oh, oh, oh it's not inside. It no, right it's there. not. Okay. Yeah, okay. So, we are so <laughs> All right, so I'm going to create zero <laughs> records. I'll create one new record. We got Muppet. And then we say, but let's say that, you know, we're going to do this form. We're going to fill out this form and we're going to send out that, that the, 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 the Acme disposal company wants to make available Muppet. And, and so I'm just going to go here into Muppets. I'm going to go to fields. I'm going to say name of the Muppet and sales price. Okay. And what I want to do is, is I want to tap into a global setting that is going to help me make this up. Uh, so this is a solution, right? So I'm going to say, okay, uh, I got a relationships right here. So now somewhere we have this Muppet thing. Here's Muppet up here. So anchor buoy, right? So move this out of the way. I'm going to move Muppets down here to the bottom, down to the very bottom. Woo! Okay, I went too far. <gasps> no, not that far. See, it goes too fast sometimes. Oh, there it is. All right, so here's uh, navigation. I'm going to move this up. Okay, once again, this little box is, is totally fake and arbitrary. It doesn't, it's just, a, it's an on-screen documentation that goes up there. I can say copy. I say, where's that little duplicate button right there? Okay, then I'm going to say, this is going to be, I don't know what T111 is. That's kind of weird. I'm going to say, how about T200? As if there's 200 uh, buoys and there's not. Then we have, we have Muppets, right? So, Muppets, uh, okay. So now we're building the whole anchor buoy and the whole enchilada, right? So we got that. Muppets always comes in front. It's going to be called T200 underscore Muppets. Now, the next thing we need to do is connect it to preferences. So the Muppet layout, because remember, the layout belongs to an anchor. And the anchor, everything that we need to drive on the layout, we need to get through this anchor. And this, so the anchor has to, we have to put supporting things over here that support what we need. So if I say add a new thing right here, I'm going to say connect it to preferences. Okay, it's right here. And then I would go over here and I would double click. It. I would say T 200 a alpha underscore preferences. And you could come up with whatever naming convention, use mine, use someone else's doesn't matter. But I think this part pretty much mandatory. So here we got this. So then what we do is we cross connect preferences and we're looking for ID constant. You're like, wait a minute. I don't understand. Wait, right? ID constant 
is what preferences ID is? It's uh no uh well, you could have an ID preference, but how many records are supposed to be in preferences? One. Right. So you don't really oh. need to worry about foreign key and. Well, you don't have to worry about a primary key over here because there's only one record. So here, so 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 some of you are going, hey, you could have done it a different way. I created this technique. It was put into a starting point in our products before Claris ever came out with their uh, Cartesian joint, right? Um, and so, but, but if you think about this, this is one of those sentences that makes sense. It's so thoughtful and so logical. So if I'm over here and I, I'm just going to hit OK, I'm going to let it save the change. I have this window right here. And this is why I train the way I train. And this came up once again the other day because some of you were like, arr, arr, arr. It's like well, I like the shorthand. Okay, so here we go. So you got this window right here, which is our Muppet. We could uh, even put a container. I need to, let me just do this real quick. So that way, some of you don't feel gypped about that. Uh, Muppet photos, we're clear on this. we gonna say create of a container, create it. Okay, done. Does it drop it? Oh, it dropped it on there. That's so great. Let me go over here. Uh, Kermit the frog drunk. All right, there he is. Wham, right there. Got him out of here. He goes there. I'm going to put him right here. Bam. Okay, so there's Kermit. Okay. Now, this layout is attached to that one anchor. Uh, I want to create another new window over here. New window. And I want this to show me preferences. Okay. So it doesn't really matter what preferences it is, just preferences. And so if I go up here to preferences, there it is. It happens to be a layout. It's not a main layout. This is a user layout, but it's effectively the same thing. This ID constant here, if it matches the ID constant over here, doo -doo -doo -doo, ID constant, it, it activates the relationship. Part of what we try to get people to do to understand is, is like if this one right here matches one over here, one and one match, it the, the 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 relationship is turned on. Remember the bridge? We talk about the bridge, the one side of the relationship, the other side of the relationship. The bridge is now activated. And the bridge is active. It doesn't mean any data has to go across. Because the relationship act is active, Margaret, doesn't mean you're using it. I mean, because you build a bridge, does it mean anyone's going to ride on the bridge or, or anyone's going to take a bike back and forth or Muppet's going to, Kermit's going to crawl back and forth? No, it doesn't mean anything. It just means that the bridge is there if you want it. Okay. So one equals one. Now, if I create a new record over here, what what kind of field is that? This is a serial number. What is this right here, Margaret? It's a what? Calculation. It's always a one, right? Okay. Yep. So it'll always be one. Well, what if it's Miss Piggy? Right? But one equals one. So every record over here will always match the records over here. Now, people say, well, you could have a Cartesian joint. Okay. So you have that. You can do it this way. So if I'm over here in a layout, I go layout mode. Say, I want to see a field on here. I want to see a settings, a preference setting. Well, it's right here. And then I don't have to worry about which record. There's only one record over here. So if I grab any of these, I'm going to get the official data. The essential element of what preference tables, why they are, what they are, why they, why we use them. Okay. Got it. That, is this making sense? That does make sense. I never thought about, I mean, I've always seen ID constant. But I never thought about what ID constant Well, what, was. what's also really neat about ID constant is that it allows you to precisely count, and of course they've come up with other ways of doing that too. But here's the here's the other side of this: if you go back over to relationships, you're like, well, you know, you could just do it if Richard. Like, what's if Richard? Well, say we have this one up here, two hundred up here. Okay, now I'm going to do the other technique, which is what people see once again. I'm going to I'm going to create a new table. I'm going to say connect it to preferences, and. Uh, and then like with anything else in life, there's more than one way of doing it. So I've got preferences right here. I'm going to call it T200 Bravo. And this will be Cartesian join or something like that. Oh, the B should be without the underscore. Second C. Okay, it's right here. So then you're like, well, well, Margaret, this is going to blow your mind. Well, I'm going to use a Cartesian joint because I read in the FileMaker manual that smart people, if they want to connect any record over here to any record over here, all you have to do is drag something like that. Well, I got name connected to URL popover. What the hell is that? Mrs. And that'll automatically make it Cartesian? 
No, you have to come over here and you have to change it to this right here. Oh, that, that, that should mean okay. This is equal. This is F, F no, not equal. No, and this means hey, you can drink all you want, Ruben. The frogs can be totally smashed. It doesn't matter. Any record over here will match any record over here. And you're like, really? Yeah. Except that when you look at it in the relationship graph, a lot of times it looks like it's like Kung Fu from hell. And so you're like, well, how does that? Because they'll be on top of each other, right? They'll be like, oh, yeah, it's a, people are on top of each other, right? Oh, man, that could be unsavory. Oh, it's not safe for work, right? And so you have this mess over here. They they, they start to overlap, right? You're like, well, I'm going to straighten it out, and I can see what's going on. It's equal and equal. The rub is that the X down here means that anyone, but, the, but what you see is name connected to add top up. And you might not notice the X. And you're like, well, because the part of this is that you're specifying two things that don't matter. See, that's the rub with this. This is why it's so dumb. If you do this, these should just blank out. It doesn't matter. It's just like any, it doesn't matter what's on the left and the right. Yet it still specifies it at the bottom, implying somehow that it's important. The other benefit is that I can say, well, how many Muppets, like if you cross connect ID constant, uh, you can use it. It's also a counter. You can use it as a calculation field. As some kind of, you can count. Well, count the number of Muppets through the relationship. Well, how do we get a count? Well, you run a sum function, S-U-M, and then get, and then sum will total up a number. Well, if you tell it to total ID constant for every matching record, you're adding one. And suddenly you say, total up the ID constant. Now you have three records. And it makes sense. Well, I'm just counting up the number of ones. One, two, three, four, right? It's so easy to train. But if you're a professional developer, I don't like that. It's unnecessary, right? So I, I, it's a training thing for me, Jess, for you folks. Uh, Take a look Mike at questions. I used a, what's that? I just said Mike from Milwaukee basically says you initiated a light bulb moment. So Mike from Milwaukee, I just turned on the light for many, many years. I've seen it as I say, this is an existing solution. Yeah. See, that's the rub, but it's been this way so long that it was like, you know, changing this behavior would freak people out on this little Cartesian here. This, what it, it doesn't matter. I mean, you could keep adding things and adding this and adding this and adding this and adding this. Like, this is a complicated relationship. Doesn't matter. Save it. Like, what? Look, look at that. Look at that kung fu down there. Look at that kung fu. I don't even know what that means. Wait, 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 wait. Why, why can you add more fields with a Cartesian? And because it does they didn't restrict it. <laughs> like, I got into deep dog doo, doo by accidentally adding two fields the other day and i broke yeah, but that was because you were saying on something like this up here okay mikey uh, please tell me please tell me a light bulb moment this is great if you go to this equal right here it says if id constant equals id constant and then you have and then sales price say that there's a money dollar oh here's paypal currency over here this one th th money and money okay that's Th these are always going to match, but say they were something else. If it's this one and this one, you get a missile lock. It works. It turns on the bridge activates. The bridge turns so is off. that like it's pre-sorting for you? No, no. I don't want to use the word sort. Okay, sorry. <laughs> but but what's happened? There's no sorting. In okay, there's no sorting involved here at all. I'm just going to say it. No. There's no okay. <laughs> I don't, why don't you try asking your question again? Because other people have these same questions. Uh, I'm going to steal what Jesse said because Jesse's yeah, yeah. smarter That's than me. That's how you do a filter. Jesse, yes, filter. That's how it's, you do it. It's a filter. It's one way of doing the filter. This is not the highest performance met, uh, method of doing a filter. Actually, back up. Yeah, this is better than the filter that you put on the portal. This is faster, but applies to everything that goes to the relationship. Does that make sense? So... This is really good. There's some light bulb moments happening for people here. Um, and, and and my goal is that either I'm entertaining or I'm entertaining and you're having a light bulb moment or both, in which case my day was successful. I had a good Thursday. But that's why I try to get with people is matching two fields from a parent-child table. Yeah. So if this matches, which in case it would always work, 100% of the time will work, then this is kind of unnecessary. But if you had, if Richard... 
if Richard the customer equals Richard the invoice, and it's five hundred dollars here and five hundred dollars there, then it turns on. So it's two criteria. It's what they call. I think it's what they call multi predicate key. Multi predicate key. It's a key that is a combination of both sides. It's multiple items. Okay. It's an and. It's an and. It's an and search. The light bulb moment is a good thing because I could not find an explanation uh, until you. Showed we me. knew it was a good thing. We're happy to have been able to enable you to have a light bulb moment, Mike. Yes, no, absolutely. Made my day. The other thing is that if you create a new record in the child table, uh, yeah, yeah. What? So, okay, so, <laughs> okay. Well, I don't. Okay, the one that was like really nasty. I don't even know what that would do. This right here is like, <laughs> it's nasty. It's so nasty. I don't even know what that'll do. But it. But from the point of it, always activating. Because if okay, so back up. Let's just think about this objectively for the moment. So. I say I give this solution. We hire Jesse. Jesse, we're going to hire you for $500,000 a year, which is pretty good money. Jesse, you're half a million dollars a year, highest paid FileMaker developer on the planet. I even, I don't make kind of money anywhere near that. So that would be a hell of a deal. And they say, Jesse, I want you to come over here and articulate for me. Like, like if this is, these are both preferences. doesn't matter which one we're using. These are both preferences. How often are we going to create a new preferences record? The answer is, I thought we'd only needed one preference. That's correct. Okay, I ask a question. It doesn't mean it's a hard question. The answer is never. Trick question. It was, it was a trick question. The answer is correct. never, but but I'm just making sure you're following. So, 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 but here's the thing what happens. So, if I go up, um, I go to, this is really big. Give me two seconds here to make it a little more palatable. Like, uh, okay, so let's just take. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to nuke uh, some things here real quick. Let's just get rid of all these and all these and all these. and all. I'm just going to get this for the moment. I'm going to delete them. Okay. Now, let's just pretend on screen that we only have these two items right here. Okay. Everyone good with that? We're going to pretend that those these are two. So you're on accounts, and it connects to contacts. If you double-click on this box right here, there's a – this is for David. I, I, David said correctly. I'm just explaining what David was saying. Um or simply, is that if you are on a screen over here and you see related, so this this is the bridge, and you're on this, the left side of the bridge, you're over here, a little Lego person's over here, and you're looking with your binoculars across the bridge to the other side, and you can see like a contact or something over there, you, as a Lego person over here, can initiate a new record creation over here if you check off the allow creation of related records in this relationship. That makes sense what I just said. Oh, that's bad. But if you're over here, this is why you're on like on a invoice and you create new line items, for example, by clicking in the portal row and then typing. And then and it, and it allows you to do that if you have checked that checkbox right here. That makes sense? Got it. So if you check that checkbox when it's attached to ID. Allow content. the creation of a, a record in this table on this. this. This screen is very binary. Left side, right side. Left, left side, right side. Allow creation of really like on this side through the relationship. Okay. So say you're over here and you're going to type something over on this side into a related field over there. And the computer goes, yep, there's no related record. I'm going to create a record on the other side. Well, it's going to create a related record on the other side. It says creation of records in this table via relationship. But said another way, allow a person on the other side of the bridge to create a, re a related record over here. Not just to create a record, create a related record. So that means it's going to, one, create a new record on the right side, and then it's going to do whatever it takes to activate the bridge. Oh, I feel like that would have implications. I don't understand what the implications are, but that seems like that would be possibly bad. Uh, uh, question from Jesse. Won't that only work for portals? Like if you're like in order to create a related, like to force the the record. Well, I got Muppet. Let me just do this real quick because I got Muppets in here. Oh, this is oh, this is this other solution. Someone said orphan records, which I have heard that term before. If I'm over here and I'm in a portal right here. There's a portal. Nah, that's a suck. That's a horrible portal. Here's a regular portal right here. So we're on the contact. Doesn't matter. 
if I'm on here and I double click the portal, double click the portal, it'll bring up the options. Okay. And so sort is an option for this portal filter records at the portal level, allow deletion of, of portal records and yeah, whatever, show the vertical scroll bar, some other stuff. Nowhere near this does it say allow creation of related records on or off. So when you turn, so remember, what's the difference between a, a portal showing related data and, and this field up here? This is good stuff. If I take this field right here and I put it up here, uh, like right here, I say, okay, uh, let me just do first name, okay? I'll change this to first name. Okay, okay, browse. Okay, here we go. So we're on contacts. Okay, new contact is right here, mm -hmm. okay? I'm going to create a new account. Okay, I have a new contact right here. There's no related contacts over here. If I type and start typing into here, which I can't do, right? If I type, this right here is always going to show you the first related record. If oh, so it doesn't a, matter how many. If you have a records. field across a relationship, across the bridge, and it's not in a portal, it will always show you the first related record. There are none. If I go backwards, uh, probably to the first record. He's right here. Then I've got, so I say, this is Fred. Okay. That's Fred up there. Then I say, uh, then uh, that's interesting, Sally. Okay. All right. So, so now, okay. This has got a sort on it probably is what's going on. Cause that should only show me the first one. It's probably got a sort. Was there a sort on here? Double click. Yeah. A sort. It's throwing off my demo browse. Okay. So now it's in the order they were created. Oh, Sally was the first one. Okay. Let me try this again. One. Uh, Robert Halsey. Yeah. See, so Sally's the first one. Just trust me on this. So this is only going to show you the first related record. So if there's no related records yet in the di in that dialogue over here, if there are no related records, checking that, turning this on will allow you to create it through to the first record, not using a portal, or allow you to create additional related records through the portal. And I'm not talking about scripting. I'm talking about without scripts. So this is not a portal specific checkbox. So once again, I, I, I sometimes I get kind of like like why 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 don't we use the word join table because there's always a better description for it. <laughs> and, why, and I was watching that uh, the uh, video yesterday. I was reviewing videos, right? And uh, so anyway, so yeah. Okay, we will see you all tomorrow for some FM forums questions and also. Uh... Yeah, bring questions tomorrow. I will find questions. We can maybe also talk about more preference table stuff because I'm curious as to what global fields you'd want to stick in. I'd like in a to know what else Mikey table. Mike is stuck on. If Mikey and Mike could let us know. That would be great. So. Yeah. Have a good one, everybody. Bye.